Hey guys, it's Michael here from FlySight. Uh, in this video, we're going to be looking at a few new features in the FlySight viewer. Uh, those are the drag polar plot, the scoring tool, and optimization. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open a file. I'm going to open time.csv here, and this happens to be me flying my Phantom 2 uh, in the time task of a PPC competition. If you haven't used it before, you'll need to show the drag polar view. So we go to the window menu and click on drag polar. I'm also going to show the horizontal speed, vertical speed, and elevation in the plot here. You can do this at the menu, but I prefer to use the keyboard. Uh, so I'm going to hit H for horizontal speed, V for vertical speed, and we already have elevation. Here we're looking at a complete jump from takeoff to landing. I'm going to zoom into just the free fall portion. So I'm going to hit the Z key. And then I'm going to zoom in to what looks like the free fall portion. Next, I'm going to mark the exit. And when I'm looking at a skydive, I pick the exit as the place where horizontal speed suddenly drops off. So I'm going to hit the X key. And then I'll click over here on the exit. And you can see that the time axis on the bottom uh, zeroes where I clicked. Now I'm going to zoom in more precisely from exit to opening. So I'll hit the Z key to zoom, and I will click and drag from exit to opening, where the horizontal speed drops off again. Now when you look at the bottom, you should see the drag polar uh, looks similar to what we saw in the last video. And I'm going to put an inset up in the top right here uh, to remind you what that looks like. On the left side of the drag polar, we'll have the minimum drag. At the top of the drag polar, we'll have our maximum lift, and somewhere in between, we'll have the maximum L over D. Before we go any further, I'm going to set the exit weight and the wing area in preferences. So we'll go to the File menu and click on Preferences, then we'll change the Aerodynamics tab. These values don't affect the optimization results or the shape of the drag polar. Uh, they only affect the actual values in the drag polar plot. So they don't need to be really precise. We just need to get in the ballpark. Uh, so I'm going to say the mass of the jumper is 70 kilograms and the area of the suit is two square meters, which is pretty typical for a small to medium sized suit. In the drag polar plot, each dot represents the lift and drag coefficient at one point in the jump. So if we hover over a point in the drag polar plot, we'll actually see that point highlighted in the timeline above. And likewise, if we move our cursor in the timeline, we'll see the point highlighted in the drag polar plot. Now we want to define the best fit curve in the drag polar plot. We're going to start by defining the maximum lift. So we're going to click on a point in the drag polar, and that horizontal line will appear, and that's our maximum lift. We want to pick a point that's near the greatest actually observed lift. Uh, with all of these choices, we don't want to be too optimistic because that'll affect the simulation results. Next, we're going to define the red curve by clicking and dragging in the plot. And again, we're going to try to pick the minimum drag so it's near the lowest actually observed drag. Other than that, we're just going to try to fit the red line as closely as we can. So I'm going to click and drag, and we'll get that vertical line near the lowest points that we see, and we'll try to kind of shoot through the middle of the points with the red line. You can see in this case the fit isn't actually particularly good. Um, that might be because I didn't cover the entire range of angles of attack. Uh, it might be because I'm changing my body position. For example, when I, when I go to dive the suit, I might be bending my legs and creating an additional source of drag. Sometimes we have to fit this curve based on how we felt. So if we felt like we were flying for time, we should see a cluster of points up near the maximum lift. If we felt we were flying for distance, uh, we should see a cluster near the red dot. And if we felt we were flying for speed, we should see a cluster down near the minimum drag. This process is fairly iterative. Uh, so we might find when we look at the simulation results, we didn't pick quite the right parameters. So we can come back and we can refit this curve, and then we can try the simulation again. There are three values shown in the drag polar plot, uh, the minimum drag, the maximum lift, and the maximum L over D. The minimum drag tells us how fast the suit is. Uh, the lower the number, the faster the suit. The maximum lift tells us how slow the suit can fall. And the maximum L over D tells us how far the suit can fly. 
These three values are all stored in preferences, so they don't change when we, when we load a new file. And that's important because we can load a flight where we cover a wide range of flying positions. We can fit the red line to that flight, and then we can analyze a flight where we don't cover as wide a range. The only catch is that the wind conditions need to be similar between the two jumps, and of course it should be the same jumper and the same suit. Now let's take a look at scoring. Uh, so the first thing we'll do is we'll show the scoring view. Again, we go to the window menu and click on scoring and the scoring view will show up. At the top of the scoring view, we define the competition window. If we click the FAI button, it will set the default from 3000 to 2000. And if we click the up and down arrows, it'll move the window by 10 meters. If the exit point has been set properly, we should see our score for this jump below. Uh, in the plot above, the dotted lines show us the top and the bottom of the window, both in elevation and time. And the white area shows us what is inside the window. The scoring view uh, shows us the results for every task. The uh, selection here is only used for optimization. So let's take a look at optimization. Uh, first, we'll select which result we want to optimize for. In this case, it's a time jump, so I'm going to have time selected. Now we'll click the Optimize button. So what's happening here? Uh, the drag puller gives us a way to simulate any flight profile. And then the software takes that and simulates a lot of profiles to see which one scores the highest. Uh, it takes those best profiles and it refines them to create new ones. And then it repeats the whole process. So we can see here the best score goes up as we get closer to an optimal solution. If at any point you get tired of waiting, you can always click the abort button and the software will keep the best solution it's found so far. We'll just uh, wait this one out. The optimization will produce a really good solution, but it's not necessarily going to produce the best one. If the solution looks surprising to us, we can try to click the Optimize button again to see if the solution is stable, to see if it'll be repeated. So now we have some new plots in the view on the top. The dotted lines show the optimal solution, and the solid lines are what we actually did. The scoring view also changes to show us what the optimal results are instead of what we actually did. And we can flip between those two by clicking the actual and the optimal buttons. So what can I do better? In this case, my horizontal speed and my vertical speed are actually fairly close to the optimal solutions, uh, except what we can see is the system thinks I should be flaring harder when I enter the window. I'm gonna hide the horizontal and vertical speed by clicking H and V, and then I'm gonna show the lift coefficient in this plot by clicking L. Roughly speaking, the lift coefficient tells us what our angle of attack is. So in this case, the software is telling me that I should die with a very low angle of attack, that I should start flaring about five seconds before I hit the top of the window, and that I should hold just shy of a stall for the rest of the window. Let's try looking at a speed jump. So again, I'm gonna open a file, and I'm gonna open speed. Next, I'm gonna hide the lift coefficient, and I'm gonna show the horizontal and vertical speeds. Then I'll zoom into the jump, select the exit, and zoom in from exit to opening. The drag puller down below is still quite close because I haven't changed my suit and the conditions haven't changed very much. We can adjust the fit just a little bit so that the red line fits better and the minimum drag is just a little further to the left. Next, we'll switch to the actual results to see how I did. And you can see that my average horizontal speed through the competition window is 217 kilometers an hour. Let's see what I can do better. So first I'll select horizontal speed, then I'll click the optimize button. Really quickly, the score actually moves above what I actually got. So let's hit abort and see what it looks like. This is the best solution that the software has so far. So what stands out here? To me, what stands out is that the horizontal speed is better than I achieved. 
And there are two possibilities there. One is that I didn't fly my suit very well on this jump. The other possibility is that I actually told the software that my suit is faster than it actually is. Let's try moving the minimum drag up just a little bit so it's closer to the minimum drag we actually observed. So I'll move that vertical line so it's near some actual points on the left side, and then we'll fit the red line. And let's run the optimization again. You can see in this case, it's uh, staying a little bit closer to what I actually scored on this jump. Let's hit abort. So that's a little bit closer to what I actually did. Uh, it seems a little more reasonable, and I should definitely be capable of flying this profile. Let's take a look at the lift coefficient. So again, I'll hit H and V to hide the horizontal and vertical speed, and I'll hit L to show the lift coefficient. In this case, the software is telling me that I should die with zero angle of attack for about five seconds, and I should build up to a small angle of attack at the top of the window. And then more or less, I should hold that position throughout the window. And you can see it does tell me actually that I should flare a little bit right at the end. Let's leave it there for now. So to summarize what we did in this video, we used data from an actual jump to define a curve, which tells us a few things about the design of the suit we're flying. We scored the jump, and then we determined the flight profile, which would give us the best score for a particular task. That's it. Thanks for watching.